Uh oh. Something's wrong with Brad's microphone. Wait, what's this wrong? Is, oh, there he is. He's back now. What happened? I don't know. You you just you weren't able to. It was weird. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Now we can. Good. Welcome to the final episode of 2021 of the only show that matters. Welcome to the Schmodown Rundown, the official episode of the movie trivia Schmodown. My name is... Brad Gilmore, but you might know me by another name. You might know me as... Oh, oh my God, you're my dream boat, for sure. You're a slacker, Brad. Brad Gilmore, this bitch. Oh, wow. yeah. I am here. It is me. It is I, the boat. And I'm joined, yeah. as always, by Frankie, the numbers Janish. <laughs> Sorry. Man. I hit the last you know. Sexy numbers from a <laughs> sexy player. Love those numbers. Sexy numbers. I love those numbers. I'm feeling Although, those. Oh, I'm feeling those numbers. you know, Brad, we are, uh, I, it's back. Yes, Paul, it's back. It's back. It's back. Paul. Your fuzzy bunny slippers are back. <laughs> yeah. Don't know what it is, man. One of them, one of them days. Yeah. Hit him with the wah wah. Yeah. You yeah. got hit with the wah wah. Whew. First ever, ever get, on the show for don't audio get hit with issues. A wah -wah. No, that's not true. Well, Frank, as we wait on PLD. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how he's going to fix that. But um, I say PLD if you have other headphones. Yeah. You, I mean, if you, if you, no, he's shaking his head he's, like he's like other headphones. He's like, hey, you I mean don't... people have more than one pair? <laughs> Just like. Two you television must be rich. sets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, right there. Right I there. I know, man. Right Isn't there. That weird? That look, at, look at my face right there. I Why know. is my face the default, like, For everybody? avatar? Yeah. Because like, when no you idea. popped on, it was also my face. Yes. That's weird. It is odd. Um, should, Frank. You know, fix that. Yeah. Frank, we're going to start talking about the rundown. I mean, about the show. About our top. Well, we can talk about the show. rundown too. Yeah. Uh, who is the player of the year? We're going to get to that in a second. We're going to let PLD kind of work his magic behind the scenes momentarily. We'll bring Paul in here uh, when he is needed. Um, but I want to ask you. I'm serious about this. Yeah. Real quick, just current event thing. Book of Boba Fett. Like, where are we? You know what? I I liked the uh, I liked the episode. But, um, you don't sound like you loved it. I did not love it, love it. I liked it, but I didn't love it, love it. And that's okay. That's so, okay. So you're a Star Wars guy. Yeah. Um. All my life. All my life. That's a Phantom Menace quote, just saying. Well, you know, everyone loves that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah they do. Um, But I wanted to say this. As a non like star like I'm not a not a Star Wars fan, but I don't know all the mythology. Sure, and I'm not deep in the canon and understand everything. I got to be honest with you, I was completely lost in this show. Well, I mean, I didn't think completely. That's weird. I don't know how, how are you lost. I mean, spoiler alert. I have no I guess, idea what's going on for Book of Boba. Well, I mean, I, thought, I, mean, I, I kind pretty, of understand it. I thought it was pretty straightforward. Like, yo, he survived the Sarlacc, and now he's like. Trying to like round up, you know, now he's like the mafia. Yeah, now he's trying to round up bits and pieces of well, the empire that was there. That's it. I mean, that was pretty much kind of like laying the groundwork. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, it I was. Didn't feel it. You know, it had some good parkour in there. <laughs> what? What is the? What is the general consensus? Been? You know, I really don't know. I don't know either. I do. I I don't dare venture into Star Wars Twitter. It is mm. an unholy mess. There's no way I will ever. I mean, I won't go there willingly. I'll tell you that. I won't go searching for it. No way. So no. I don't really don't know what the Phantom at Large thinks of the Book of Boba Fett. I haven't watched any reviews. I just watched it the other day. I liked it fine. I'm looking forward to seeing the where other it day. goes from there. When yeah. did it come out? The other day. Did it come out yesterday? Yeah. Okay, that's not the other when day. When did you it's watch yesterday. it? Today. Okay. Is today Thursday or Friday? Today is Thursday, Thursday. my friend. Yeah. Okay. I, that's what I thought. Uh, we're going to talk about who is the player of the year. Hopefully, PLD will be joining us in a second to help break down the debate. Also, Blood Ocean 07 is in the chat saying Christopher Lloyd's underrated role. And I don't know what he's referring to. 
So I want to know. Um, I, I think. Uh, what do you, What do you think, Christopher Lloyd? I think he's talking role? about Back to the Future in general, just an underrated role for Christopher Lloyd in the, is in that the un, is great Doc pantheon underrated? of roles he's he's played. Is Doc know. underrated? I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I don't. I don't know. Oh, Dennis <laughs> the Menace. Dennis the Menace. About oh, Dennis okay. Menace. Underrated role in Dennis the Menace. Mm. I got to give that a rewatch. Okay. All right. Oh, Marie My Wilson. F- I'm sorry, Marie Wilson here in the chat. She says, I really enjoyed it, Book of Boba Fett. Definitely a setup episode, but had some fantastic parts. I agree. I agree. It wasn't like, you know, boom, 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 boom. It was like, hey, check this out. <laughs> let's take it easy i like it i like <laughs> let's, it let's take it slow yeah right yeah. right we didn't get straight to the bedroom no not at all we, we right i don't even think like we just picked her up at her house yeah 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 we, we're not even in the ballpark yet like, yeah <laughs> we're sitting in traffic <laughs> we're sitting in traffic and um there's a funeral procession holding us up <laughs> yeah it's, and then yeah. a train b- following it Right, right. And then for some reason the president's in town. And so it's just like we're <laughs> we're stuck forever. And it's five o'clock. Like it's just all at the same time. We'll see. All at the same time. Have you do you ever remember in Chicago like when the president would come? Oh yeah. Well because I worked at the airport. Yeah, yeah, so I worked at the airport at O'Hare and whenever he being Obama. Yes, Obama. And uh, well even Trump too. Uh he came like once or twice. Uh anyway, so well at, well when the president would fly in you know, they fly in Air Force One into O'Hare, and they have to, like, shut down, like, a runway for, like, an hour before and, like, an hour after for Air Force One to, like, land. So it kind of, oh. like, sh- kind of, like, because, you know, security risks and all that stuff. And so, yeah, it's like, why is it kind of quiet over here? It's like, oh, because the president's going to be landing soon or, you know, so, yeah. Why? They land at Chicago O'Hare? At O'Hare, that yeah. That's crazy because... Here, they don't land at IAH, which is our main airport, George Bush Airport, yeah. which would make sense for a president to land. It's named after a president. Um, and then Hobby is our secondary airport. They land at this place called Ellington Field, which hmm. is down the street from Clover Field. Hey. Go okay. figure. Wow. They land at Ellington. You know, because we do have Midway Airport, but that airport cannot uh, take a 747, which is Air Force One. Because mm-hmm. that, that fun fact about Midway Airport, it's only a square mile. Like all the runways are encapsulated in a square mile. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So there wouldn't be enough runway. There's no, for that not enough runway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I I was in town one time. In town, I live here. What do you mean? The president was in town. Uh, Forty five was in town, and I saw the beast, the limo. Was oh the beast. yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, cause cause uh, the president passed me as I was going this way. The president was going that way on the other side of the freeway. Hmm. Uh, has a large head, very large head. I could see in the back window. Interesting. Very, very large individual. Well, nevertheless, nice. nevertheless, we're back. Um, we're back. Yeah, I know. I think we stalled enough for for PLD. We're, we're I working, tried we're to on, stall. We're working on ten minutes here, and you know, yeah, yeah. I we tried to stall chats, for though. Paul. We, we do have a couple super chats. Here. Let's take them. Let's take them while we wait for Paul. God damn it, the hell! Ugh. You know, I'm really messing this up because I did really? that on the Hall of Fame the other day. I hit the sexy numbers. You did you? On a on on a Tuesday show, and what did he say? Like, what did he what say? is that? What is that? <laughs> oh my God! Was he jealous? Numbers. Was he jealous? A somebody in bit? the chat, somebody in the chat said "sexy numbers" with a Z Dude, at the end. Look at that! They know. I know you're over, brother. You're over, brother. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Super chat. Timothy, Timothy, uh, you know what's impressive? The two-time faction champions corruption having two of the top five nominees for player of the year huge huge for shannon barney yeah i mean that's kind of how you win a faction title helps yeah yeah um aaron truong i hope i'm saying that right super chat a clean shave in the boat brad gilmore i feel like i'm looking at the yacht instead looking good chief Yes, wow. so I did the thing where you go to even it up. Uh oh, you know what yeah. I'm talking about. We've yeah. all done. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And you're like, okay, a little, okay, a little more there. Okay, ah, crap. You know, and then you end up taking it all the way up to your chin, and you're like, yeah. off with the hair. That's it. Yeah, it sucks. But you know what? Yeah. It's good because it'll grow back 
in all the same length. Oh, well, so we think. I mean, that's the plan. <laughs> right, right. I don't know if it's going to work. It it won't, though. It won't, no. It's, and then you know. the old wives' tale was when you shave it, it comes in fuller and, and darker. That's what right? they say. Yeah, you know, I don't know that continues that to apply. That is such BS. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, like, when you're first starting growing hair, I don't know. Like, I don't think that's true at all. You don't think so? Okay, I don't know. No. Um, are the nominees officially out? No, no, no. So that's the okay. thing. Uh, Christian in the Facebook group uh, dropped a whole bunch of poll slash nominees um, for various categories. Checking on and the um, and if and as you see at the bottom of our screen here, um, I do have these are numbers according to last, well not last, but yesterday uh, when I looked at them. Uh, Player of the year uh, polling slash nomination slash votes. Took place in the Facebook group, and when I last looked at it yesterday evening, here are the vote totals. Uh, Marisol McKee leads with 235. Griffey Nunes with 183 in second. At third place, Kalinowski with an even 100. Thomas Harper there in fourth place with 40 votes, followed very closely by William Bibiani with 39 votes. And then for good measure, we have Ethan Irwin there with 30 votes. Um, those were yesterday's Facebook group numbers. I did not check to see if they were updated, but I don't imagine there's that much uh, fluctuation in those numbers. If there is, someone in the chat could let me know. But um, we're looking at these one, two, three, four, five, six individuals. Um, Brad, I mean, sir, what do what do we think well, about these numbers? I'll tell you what we think about. But they're preliminary. That doesn't. This isn't the end all be all. It's just very. Okay. The iceberg stuff. Look, we we're just talking about presidential stuff. Presidents. Yeah. All right. I look at this as like a, if we take this as a scientific poll that's reflective of the, the totality. Quinnipiac poll. Is if it's a Quinnipiac poll. Yeah. Um, and we look at it as the totality of the Schmodown viewing audience. We just you know replicate that. Okay. Marisol McKee is running away with this thing. She's running away with it. I mean, fifty votes ish, right? Yeah, might as well be a thousand. Might as well be a thousand. <laughs> okay. I just I, and look, and I love Griffey Noom. I think yeah. that there's more of there's more of a case to make Griffey Noom a rookie of the year instead of player of the year. Now we're talking about singles or overall. This we're is overall. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's Marisol by a mile. Okay. By a mile. But here's uh, he, here's an interesting, um, I guess tidbit. In regards to rookie of the year, Griffey Nooms mm. has 183 votes in this overall player of the year. Mm. Thomas Harper has 40 votes. Woo! Now, I don't know what kind of correlation we can make there, but if you're willing to vote for Griffey Nooms as player of the year, right? certainly you'd be wanting to vote for him for rookie of the year. One would have to imagine that would be right. The case, so I'm Mr. wondering Jennings. if I'm reading the tea leaves here. You're reading the leaves, the tea leaves, not just leaves. The tea leaves. There you go. I wonder if this is an indicator that Griffey Names could, in fact, pull off, which I think is kind of an upset at this point of Rookie of the Year because we've seen so much support for Thomas Harper, uh, including from Thomas Harper, <laughs> about being Rookie of the Year. And now that with these these numbers for pl overall player of the year, I'm wondering, you know, is is this also some sort of inclination uh, about where the rookie of the year race could end up end up going? I should actually look up the rookie of the year race poll if that one is in the Facebook group. But go ahead, Brad. Yeah, I, I would be interested to see that uh, Timothy Timothy coming in here with another super chat. We also put in the chat, fun fact, my childhood home is close to Ellington Field. Interesting, Tim. Uh, how I see the top three nominees, McKee being the first woman to win the most prestigious championship, a.k.a. the singles title, Nooms for winning two tournaments as a rookie, and Kalinowski for best three-division performance. It's a very yeah. interesting nod there for Kalinowski. I think the one and two is Marisol and Mike, not Griff. I think I think he's yeah. a three, if not a four. I actually might put Griffey Nooms. No, no, I put him maybe three. I was gonna say I, I almost put Bibiani ahead of him. I mean, that's a, there's an argument for that. 
For sure. I almost put Bibiani ahead of him just from what Bibs did in, in, in teams, obviously, in, in the rest of the season, but yeah, chiefly in teams um, as being part of now the greatest team of all time. So, hmm. yeah, I put I, – I would – Mike, and this is a familiar conversation that we've had before. It's definitely a, a 1A, 1B thing. <laughs> for, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For player of the year. This because is tough. Mike, Mike destroyed it. He destroyed tough, his yeah, – yeah. look. Mike Kalinowski walked into this season and understood the assignment that was ahead of him. He knew if I want to go down as the greatest IG player of all time, I got to win the title and I got to defend it at least once. Yeah, he defended it tw- twice, three times, def- oh, three, three times, three times, three yeah. times. That's insane. No one's ever even come close to that. Not even close, right? So for that re- okay, now let's talk about them. So Marisol defended Real quick, okay. I just want to point out, just so we can get off the, the Rookie of the Year thing, I looked up the, the numbers here. Yeah. Uh, Griffin Newman has 175 votes. Thomas Harper has 161 votes for Rookie of the Year. That's very early stuff, small sample size uh, in the Facebook group. But I don't know. I think Griffin Newman could pull out um, Rookie of the Year potentially. Oh Oh, which is God. which? I mean, we had a very heated debate about that a couple weeks we ago. Did. So um, this is interesting to see these numbers. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, going back to this one now, I, I said Marisol by a mile, but now I'm almost I'm thinking about it a little bit more. Because sorry if you hear my my cat in the background. I don't know that if you can hear be, that. It could be my, from me. Oh, it could be okay. It's, there's some it's cat a symphony of, of meowing going of, on. of kitty cat meows. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What do you what like what is more impressive in, in all honesty for for Marisol to win yeah. the title and then defend it twice, including X spectacular in New York or for Mike to win the title and defend it thrice? Because, look, I, they, they both were were significant in winning the securing the faction title at spectacular. Right. Mike, he could have lost it. He could have lost that match, and it still would have came down to uh, Marisol and, and Griffey Nooms. If you know, so, but Marisol had to was like was was the final nail in the coffin, right? Um, just looking at Marisol McKeelo's year in terms of singles and teams, she has a combined record of nine and three, right? Seven and zero oh in singles, undefeated singles season. Um, defending the championship, winning that spectacular, it's the nail in the coffin for the faction title for corru- for corruption for a second straight year. Look at Griffey Nooms, who's ten and two across two divisions in singles, seven and one teams, three and one. I remember he went on a 10-0 dual division run, right? Something that no one ever thought could be possible at that level, especially. Um, so incredibly impressive to win ten matches in a row across. Two different divisions. Ultimately, he came up short, sure, with his two matches at Spectacular, but incredible year. So it's no wonder Griffey Nooms is getting uh, that, th- that many votes, uh, at least preliminary-wise. Mike Kalinowski, he was 7-2 across three divisions, right? He was 1-1 one one in singles, 1-1 one one in teams, and then undefeated 5-0 and in Intergeekdom, where he's just setting a whole new benchmark in terms of what excellence is in the inner geekdom division and and legendary status is in inner geekdom division with all his defenses now and being a three time inner geekdom champion. You have Thomas Harper, six and oh, one division, rookie, won a tournament, and then defended the belt or won the belt, defended the belt at spectacular, impressive year. William Bibiani, he was eight and two across two divisions. In singles he was three and two. Teams Undefeated season, five and zero, wins back the title and defends it three times. Impressive stuff. And then you have Ethan Irwin, eight and four, across three divisions. Singles was three and one. He oh, won man. back the title, then lost it. And then teams with Lightning Time and Liz Shannon Miller, they get all the way to a title shot and get knocked out by Shazam. And then in Inner Geekdom, he's one and one. He's got a win in Inner Geekdom. So only. Only Mike Kalinowski and Ethan Irwin have a win in three divisions. Everybody else, aside from Thomas mm-hmm. Harper, has played in two divisions. Thomas Harper, just Star Wars. So, um, 
there's there's a lot of excellent play amongst these these players, amongst amongst these six players, and it's it's really interesting because there's another factor that you, we can look at here in terms of faction points earned, and when you look at Mike Kalinowski, he leads the entire league this year with 42 points earned, just ahead of Marisol McKee with 39 faction points. At third place, Thomas Harper, 31 points. I think that definitely gives him a little bit of a boost uh, in this race. To, to put up 31 points, it's a third best point faction total. That's that's huge. I mean, he had to go undefeated yeah. to do everything you know, in that division. Um, but great run. William Bibiani, 28 and a half points uh, for him. Griffin Newman came up with 26 faction points. Amongst all those matches, he, he was only able to get 26 points. Um, and then there's Brendan Meyer, who had 25 and a half points. Dan Merle, 23 and a half points. Andrew DiMolante had 23 points. And then Ethan Irwin, who's in this uh, in this poll here, he had 19 points. So I, I, I don't – Ethan Irwin – could he be nominated if we're looking at five nominations? I don't know that Ethan Irwin is going to make the cut, given the fact that, especially Thomas Harper, who's only a one-divisional player, has the third most faction points, defended the belt, won the belt, all that. So I don't, there, I don't know what there. – There is a lot there to look at, but it's all very close in my opinion. Well, look, we, we have to get a third person's opinion on all this, but before we bring that third individual on who has three letters in his moniker, uh, Tony Janish – in the chat. Uh, I wonder who that is. <laughs> Just want to say to you, Brad, Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year to you, Janish. And Frankie, Happy New Year also from all of your family. Oh, are y'all related? Continued <laughs> yeah. access to both of you in the new year. That is my mom. I know who it is. I just want the the audience to know. Because you oh, said Tony. Tony. It's Tony with an I. T-O-N-I. T-O-N-I. Well, well, first of all, and that's the full name? Is that the full name? Or is that the is that the short name? This is short for Antonin. Antonin? Yeah. Antonin. Oh, wow. Interesting. There you go. I, You're learning I, a lot. Hi, Mom. Love you, Mom. He- hello, uh, Mrs. Miss Janish. Uh, how are you? So nice. <laughs> and I, by the way, for the record, I, I actually do like Frank. It's just a it's just a shtick. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna add in our third person here. There he is. There okay. Now we can test this. There it is. It's there. We're good. I Sounding think that good. we made it work, PLD. Perfect enough for me. <laughs> All right, PLD. Yes. Uh, after a 25-minute break from you, <laughs> <laughs> what what do you have, a Windows 95? Why did it take you so long to restart your computer? Well, I restarted it, and like I tried my mic, and my mic seems to be screwing up, so I had to switch back to my webcam mic because I don't know what's going on with my other mic. It just seems like it... I reset it and it's fine. And all of a sudden, like five minutes later, it just starts doing a staticky thing. I don't know. I'm sick of this freaking mic. Why I threw out the window look, in about two seconds. Christmas just passed. I saw you and Mrs. Denuzio looking lovely in front of a Christmas tree. And just why didn't you ask her for a new mic? Well, because I just got this. This one actually replaced my old fucking mic. I'm oh, sorry. This replaced replaced my old he's mic. He's pissed. He's hot. He's, he's hot. Freak I go, need it. Here we go. <laughs> The macho man is here. So, like, I just got this one in place, like, about, I don't know, a month and a half ago, maybe? And then it was fine until just today. All let's of a let's see it. Put it to the camera. Let's see. What what are you working with here? So, What are you working with? A blue? Yeti. Oh, it's a blue Yeti. Okay, okay. yeah. That's yeah. quality. That's it's quality. quality stuff. But for some reason, it just gets this weird static thing. So maybe it's a connection somewhere. I got to do some research again and figure it out. But for now, you hate I'm here. It. You can hear me. Good enough, I guess. Okay. Who is the player of the year in your opinion? After coming to a lot of deliberation on this topic, I think I have to go with Mike Kalinowski. Okay, let's hear it. Yeah. Let's hear it. I do got to say that because I think that it comes down to a couple of different things. Uh, to me, there's three three or four definitive nominations. You got Thomas yeah. Harper who's in the outside a little bit. You got Griffey Newman, who we talked about, obviously, Griffey versus Harper. I think you got Marisol McKee, who had a stunning season. But then stunning. you got Mike Kalinowski. And you gotta, it comes down to this. Griffey Newman did great, but couldn't seal the deal. And to me, you can't be player of the year unless you seal the deal. A belt, a championship win, to me, is important. Uh, you can't just go for it and get there and then fall. You can't be player of the year that way, in my, in my eyes. So then it comes down to, that takes out Griffey Newman. 
Then it comes down to Mike, Marisol, and Harper. Mike and Marisol have both the idea of the consistency and playing in multiple divisions, which gives them a leg up over Thomas Harper, in my mind. So to me, that eliminates Harper. So it comes down to Mike Kalinowski, Marisol McKee. Both great seasons, both are worthy choices. I think Mike has had a better overall run in multiple divisions than Marisol has. Uh, and that's, that's it. It's a, I could be argued, I could be argued with, I could be convinced that Marisol is worthy. But at the end of the day, Mike's teamwork, he had a great, he has one big win and one almost defeating Shazam, the greatest team of all time. Take him to the limit with that. Uh, and then he has the IG team where he wins the belt, he defends the belt, uh, and the singles was fine. Then you have Marisol. She had a great run, great win, great defense, stunning thing. Teamwork was okay. Deception was okay. Uh, didn't didn't do exactly what they wanted to do. So Mike, to me, just legs it out. Does the fact that he has earned the most faction points, even against Marisol, does that does that come into your equation of figuring out? That is another bonus point for it. I mean, Mike basically took them on their took about his back and ran with it. I mean, Marisol was great, but Mike, even in the same division, even the same faction, has more is much more is more of a valuable player than Marisol was. Not much more, but enough that it's it's when you're putting up against up against each other, who had the better year? Yeah, I know. Now I said when we looked at the data, um, Marisol takes it by a mile, right? Because uh, Mike, even in this data, is uh, was it a hundred votes, Frank? Yeah, a hundred votes compared to two thirty-five. I mean, it's pretty pretty strong. Now, let me ask you because I have been in a different planet since the FCL season stopped, and then since uh, Spectacular wrapped. Who's voting on these this year? It was be... in the years past. We voted as in like the, in the patrons, yeah, and the patrons. That's what it's going to be. The patrons and those players and those involved with the league oh Mar marisol's gonna win <laughs> i mean the patron vote can come in and it could be kalinowski but i think i i do think there is a much stronger case for kalinowski than than griffey nooms um yes. to be mm -hmm. i mean it honestly the three for me it is between marisol mike and bibiani yeah like what uh, I, think did, I'm, I think I'm there with you, Frank. Like those three to me are the top three players of the year, and I and I got to throw in Harper um, at that fourth spot because what he did is is incredible. Um, although I might I guess nudge in, I'll put Nooms and Harper there at that fourth spot. Just you know, um, tomato tomato, just to tick people flip. off, and that. Yeah. But it's. I was thinking about Mike, and I'm like, you know what? This kind of reminds me of when I thought it was 2019, I think, when Sam retired middle of the year, and Shire Wolves come up, and Rachel wins the Geekdom title, and she wins, she's double belted, right, with the Shire Wolves. And even though Sam Levine retired like in the middle of the year, he was still crown player of the year. And I was championing hard for rachel cushing i mean yeah that annoyed me she too. played in three divisions <laughs> yeah not you she, not you championing for rachel cushing uh, i'm saying sam winning the yeah and, the year and she, she was playing in three divisions um double belted just as sam was but she played the whole year she played you know she didn't retire um and she defended at spectacular all that stuff so um i feel like if we have someone who's playing in three divisions, and I understand Mike was one and one in singles, is one and one in teams, five and zero oh in inner geekdom, but he has defenses, and that was kind of the knock on Rachel's. Um, people would knock on, well, she didn't defend the belt, or um, you know, she lost the belt to Mike inner geekdom. You know that I think that, was that the following year. No, I think it was the year preceding. I'm getting it mixed up, but whatever it was, they were like, you know, Sam, he defended the singles bell against Rachel and defended it against Clark Wolf, um, won, you know, won the team's belt from the Patriots um, and then defended it at, at Collision in an Ironman match. So it was like he has the defenses, and so that kind of just drowned out whatever, you know, whatever I was trying to give towards Rachel and, and like, that bid for player of the year. Because someone who plays three divisions – 
I don't care that it was just two matches in singles or two matches in teams. As PLD said, you know, Kalinowski and Chance, you know, they played Shazam, took him to sudden death, to the limit. Um, you know, close enough, almost doesn't doesn't cut it because you need you need the hardware. But I think you need the hardware. I think you know what what they were able to do against Shazam. I mean, they they beat Danger Zone, and you know that that's a huge win. And they got really close against Shazam, and that's unfortunate that it didn't. Because if he had done that, if he had three belts or two belts this year, then it's 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 game over because no one's double belted this year, right? right. So in past years we've had that where it's like, oh, double belted, easy, we'll, obvious, you, know, shoo you, it. you win, shoo right? Yeah. But this year that's not the case. Griffey Nooms he wins two tournaments, and it's like, okay, well, that's pretty insane, you know. But he doesn't have any hardware. But it, and it's been done before, right? Once. Doesn't that kind of take away from? But doesn't yeah, that kind of once, take away from it a little, a little like bit? Four years ago, three years, just ago. a little bit. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's disqualifying, but you know, it's been done before, so it's not like he did something that we've never seen. Um, but for a rookie, uh, from a rookie, sure. Yeah. Also, from a rookie, Sam sure. Sam played in a smaller field of that tournament um, than than Griffey did. However. Sam played in a larger teams tournament than King Arthur did. So there's, right. you know, you can do all that kind of stuff, right? But yeah. the point still remains. Yeah. Uh, but, okay, i am be honest with you guys. This is actually, like, a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I really yeah. thought that I was going to come on here and say Marisol was the player of the year. And then I saw the data, and I said, okay, yeah, Marisol's a player of the year. But I think I might have to give it to Mike. It's just, it's just what you find more impressive. Yeah, right? and I think also the – the the likability factor of Marisol McKee weighs heavily on this vote. It does. That's and, why I said she's going to win because every I I I like Marisol McKee tremendously, and I wrote a yes. book with Mike. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I worked on a project with him, <laughs> right, and right. I still am like, I don't know, man. Marisol might take this. <laughs> I love Marisol McKee. I think that that but that definitely will not? come into play. But Mike's also got the ability to. You got to also factor in whether, I mean, I don't know how you factored it or not, but as far as performances go, I mean, Mike also gives a lot of uh, credence to a heel like performance, a very energetic like character like performance. He's been under very entertaining his promos and everything else, too. I don't know how that weighs into it at all in terms of this. And I think should. I think my, and I think Marisol's gotten very, gotten better, but Mike's. I thought her promos were were really good. She's inventive, especially given the fact that a lot of this year was digital. Okay. Uh, you know, she went above and beyond. So. That's true. But Mike's a pro. Mike just has that it factor that I think she's getting to there, but she doesn't quite reach that level yet. I think Mike's one of the top promo guys of the game at this point, especially without Andrew Guy being around as far as that goes. He's really stepped it up even more. I think Marisol is approaching that fast, but I think I would give the edge to Mike. So that's another thing that weighs my head. I agree with that. Uh, and, and Mike, Mike has figured out how to, I mean, not figured out. He's one of the few who's always known how to be a showman, but he's figured out how to be a showman within the game right, really, yeah. really well. And even even his ad lib moment, which Chandru, my man, you should have seen coming from a mile away, where Chandru <laughs> pulled out, you could lick on my lollipop, <laughs> and Mike goes, size does matter. Man, I'm like, mm. phenomenal. Phenomenal stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're right about that. I want to I want to look in the chat real quick, and see what what the peeps are. Uh, what are, are the saying. people saying, Frank? Let's see here. Uh, Dragon Seventeen. He's got a, a couple comments in here, and I think so. He goes, Mike Kalinowski needs to get way more respect in this award. He had a more complete and more impressive year than the rest of the people. No, it's not yeah. the same. I think that's in regards to Rookie of the Year, player overall player of the year. But he goes, it's not the same. It's just that for some reason people think that Player of the Year needs to be a singles player. And that's a crazy bias. He says, it should not be a singles player without a doubt. If a player in another division does better than a singles player, he or she should win. Uh, Thrawn, he says, I'm down for KO as player of the year. He played the most dramatic match of the season and won. Um, He's played a couple dramatic matches this year. Um, Let's see here. Uh, Let's see what else we got. Um, Thrawn also says, Noom's got that close but no cigar attached to his season. I mean that's he definitely does. Fortunate, yeah. he um, definitely has the oh, just a bit outside. Dragon <laughs> right, like, seventeen goes on the same. Also, did not have a good year in teams. I mean, they were two and three deception. So, yeah, I, I mean, 
But I, I would argue that she was the better of the two in all their matches, I, I think, this year. And that's saying something against Adam Collins. And that's no shade towards Adam Collins. I think she was slightly better than Adam in teams this year on an overall scope. Interesting aside, though, I would also say that Chance was probably better than Mike in the corruption matches. So maybe well, that I mean, does... I think Mike had, had a couple of key moments in that Shazam match that kept him in it. Um, but yeah, yeah. And but Chance right. was fire in that in that speed round. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they're just a great team. So it's it's yeah. it's really they're, split they're phenomenal. hairs there. Uh, Justin, he says, Justin Square, that is, Mike only played two matches in teams where he was one and one He wasn't the standout in either of those matches. In either of those matches, singles, he did nothing of note. He mm-hmm. had a great match against Hauser, but that's not player of the year worthy. So mm-hmm. it doesn't look like Justin's leaning towards Mike. Um Let's see. Tim Sam says Sam won Player really of the Year for match, being the though. first. Yeah. yeah, Sam won Player of the Year for being the first double belted champion in the history of the Shmodown while being stellar in both singles and teams. I'm not gonna relitigate this <laughs> that no. year, but okay. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Justin again. He comes in and says, "For me, it comes down to Marisol's season in singles versus Mike's season in IG." Okay, I was more impressed with what Marisol did versus Mike. Both were awesome, but I'd give it to Marisol. So. Justin's kind of looking at their respective areas of expertise and saying which which is better. But then I would argue why why wouldn't Justin also then throw in Harper there, right? Harper went six and zero in Star Wars. Mike went five and zero in Intergeta. Marisol went seven and zero in singles. And then uh, to me that feels like Justin that would might be your your top three. I don't know. Um, let's see here. There's also a special request for you in here for you, Brad. For, for uh, me? Yeah. For What's you. the request? Uh, they want you to do a Home Alone book. So, you know, no no pressure. But uh, if you could get around to it, Brad, that'd be great. You know. I will say Tay. Is it Tay? Tay? Namaho? Tay Namaho? Yeah. It's a great idea. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. I wasn't sure which way you're leaning on that. I was either going to be like hitting it, or you're going to be like, no, nah. But oh, I love Home Alone. Oh. So it's, it's historically it's, actually been my third favorite franchise, even though I only like three of the movies. <laughs> you like three um, of them? Impressive. I like three of the six. In 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 regards to Justin's kind of like comparison, you know, Marisol had two defenses. Mike had three defenses, mm-hmm. but Marisol had more wins in that division. And so mm. it's like I. How do you – it's like I said, it's like how do you start trying to figure out – and I think what it ends up coming down to is who do you like more? Who who, do you, who are you a fan of more? Like for this year, for this year. I mean Marisol, you know, look, she made history this year right? in the singles division, you know, and and she made some more history by defending the bell as many times as she did, you know, only the second player outside of Dan – to defend more than once um, in a single reign. So, uh, well, the third the third player, Dan and Sam did that. Um, Marisol joins, you know, that little Dan group there. Sam. So, um, yeah, it, it's 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 tough. It's tough. And I mean, like, and then there's Bibbs, and like he's probably not going to get it, but I he definitely needs to be recognized. I think he's one of the top three players this year. Um, just being someone who can play in multiple divisions the way Mike and Marisol did. And then, you know, Harper's, you know, and Noom. So it's like, yeah, I think it's top heavy between Mike and Marisol. It's just, I kind of want to give it to Mike. I kind of do. We'll give it to him. Uh, Something you say about Bibiani, I will do want to point out that I think that Bibiani actually gets hurt because Shazam is so good. And I know that sounds weird, but like, you're not. You're just used to them winning now, and so it doesn't like affect you as far as like when they win. You're kind of like, okay, cool, they won. I, I expected it in a way. So like, not expecting things can build up in your head that way. Yeah, I was just thinking this Canada Rocks. If Bibbs had made the finals in that singles tournament, oh man, and an undefeated teams run. Who yeah. like if he just made it to the singles finals, not even win win it. Um, I still think he would have had – this would have been a, a much crazier – well, then we're not even talking about Griffin Griffin Noom you know, Griffin yeah. at that point then really. Uh, maybe we are. I don't know. Maybe because he, he only plays one match at, at Spectacular. He puts it all into – I don't know. A lot of what-if scenarios coming out of that. But I, I don't know. I, and Brad, you've been all over the place. You were like – I know. I, I, by a mile. It's Mike. Here's the thing. I came in here 
pretty sure it was going to be Marisol. And then I've just I've just started to think that I, I might I think I'm I think I'm Mike now. I think I'm Mike now because it's unprecedented what he did. Not saying that it's not for Marisol. She did she was a lot of firsts. She did some records, right? Yeah. But we have seen something similar to what she's done at uh and this isn't even a rookie season. This is her second season in, in right. the game. So you know, you could make an argument, even though he didn't defend it. What Adam did last year was was almost as impressive, running through that tournament, including beating John Roca and then Dan Merle at Spectacular to become champion. I mean, that's right. that's a crazy run, too. I don't want to diminish the accomplishments this year in Marisol McKee whatsoever. If This is a really hard one, but Mike defending three times. Man, yeah. that's winning and defending, right? Like, But you know what? I mean, winning and defending. If I'm trying to poke holes in, in Mike Kalinowski, people, you know, I go, did he beat Amaru, or did Amaru lose? Right, because Amaru, Amaru said had the wrong answer. two opportunities to seal the deal. Now, credit Mike answer was in front of him, but he had no control over he won or lost that match. It was up to Amaru, and unfortunately for Amaru, it sucks, but he let it slip through his fingers because we can. Because then it's really it kind of might be a runaway with Marisol. But, you know, if I'm trying to, like, you know, really pick apart an argument yeah, against I Mike, I, will, I'll, I would throw that out there. I Marisol, hear you. I mean, I know Marisol. Hurt. If I'm looking at Marisol, look, I know Kevin Smith was 3-0. and But, I mean, like. It's Kevin Smith. Dude, like, he's no one. It was like an afterthought that Marisol, you know, was going to beat Kevin Smith and go on to play for the singles belt. All right. You know, like, so there's, you know, there's, there's things like, that, that we can kind of like point at, And then you can also ding Marisol for the, her team's run, which wasn't great, but, but Kalinowski played two team matches and two singles matches. And okay. He beat Paul Walter Hauser, who's who looks to be a fine player. And it was a good match, but then he loses Janine, you know, and so Marisol it's, beat. Marisol beat. Mm. Barely. But see, again, Marisol had a way for Janine to miss to miss her five pointer in order for her to yeah. win. Right? Yeah. So there's all these little things um that that you can just get wrapped up in and, and the if match you're trying with, to, you know. The match she had with chance. Didn't that come down to Chance's five? No. It no. really came down to the fact that Chance got spoof and he got wrecked by that. Right. Oh, right, 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 right. But right. then Marisol was just you know, stepped on his he throat didn't after know that. His five. And, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Correct. She hit, Marisol hasn't had to answer a five in any of her championship matches, so uh, I mean that's also fairly dominant <laughs> in in like the column. Yeah, of I mean that, both that from that Marisol. Puts, uh, yeah, uh, ticking her column. <laughs> a Jones versus D Jones. That that's a rough way to lose. I mean, man. you look at Mike Amaru. He he just won that by the skin of his teeth. He had to go to sudden death against Parker. You know, so it's like, ooh, you know. Who had tougher? Who had who had better championship matches between Mike and Marisol in their respective divisions? I would say Marisol had better championship matches than Mike, um, a pure dominance level, I think. And it wasn't like Marisol was playing scrubs either. You know, we're talking about Ethan Irwin, Chance, mm -hmm. and and Griffey Nooms. I mean, like tough, tough players. Um, oh, man, it's tough. Well, <laughs> it's... no, look, 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 look. We're gonna we're gonna set, we're gonna settle this right now. We each get a vote. We each get one vote, and you can change your mind when you get your official ballot. But as far as this show purpose goes, we need you to lock in who you are going to vote for. Not who is going to be, yeah. who you are going to vote for. I'm going to start with you, Frank Janish. You have one vote. This You're putting – Because if Marisol just had – like if she had a 500 record in teams or just one game above 500 – I would have no problem voting Marisol, but look, Mike is five one and one in singles and in teams, undefeated in intergeekdom. That's three divisions. He's great on the mic. He's great in, in an event. So is Marisol, but Mike, the whole Chandru thing. I mean, like the dude just he knows how yeah. to make an entrance. He knows how to make an exit. He knows how to play the game. I, I, I'm going my Kalinowski. He's gonna get my vote. And it pains me. It's, PLD. it's tough. It's so tough. PLD. 
I've always been, I have a history of rooting against Mike in every way possible. Um, <laughs> so nothing would like, you know, nothing would be more accurate for me to just vote for Marisol because of that. But I, I, I can't do it. I think Mike just, it's just a touch, touch, that's a touch more qualifications at this point. Overall faction points, defenses, title defenses, the character work. Again, all these are just a little bit nudged over, and then you have the team the of the other divisions where in teams Marisol didn't quite have a good enough run, and Mike's run was pretty. Even though at one and one, you take the greatest thing of all time to the limits and sudden death. That's got to be a plus for him. I gotta, I gotta finish up with Mike. Wow, Mike again, Mike again. All right, and for me, when I said I think about what makes a player of the year, what's worthy of getting that vote. Obviously, hardware does come into play in that regard. I don't think it necessarily has to come into play in a rookie of the year or a a coach or a faction leader of the year, faction of the year, manager of the year. That's what I was trying to say. I don't think it necessarily has to come into uh, consideration all the time. But when you look at individual accomplishments, the biggest individual accomplishment you can make is by winning a championship. Both of the players who are in our final running for this have won championships. Mike was able to win one against Mark Hanopic. Yeah. Then defend against Chandru, Amaru, and Robert Parker within a calendar season. On the other hand, Marisol was able to win the title, defend it against Chance and Griffey Nooms. And she beat Ethan Irwin. But when I really look at it, I do have to pick Mike Kalinowski for player of the year. I, I, I really I think that it's hard to not vote for him. Now, obviously, yeah. when we talk about singles player of the year, it's 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 Marisol by a mile. That's 100%. Marisol by a mile. Yeah, that's a gibby. That's a gibby. Yeah. When we talk yeah. about the player of the year, oh man, just based off those two things right there, Mike beating Mara, Chandru, Robert, and Amaru in one season. Yep. Yeah. What are we talking about? It's Mike Kalinowski. <laughs> wow. He's getting the, the, Ron- the Roni? Wow. Oh my Not gosh. only is he getting the Roni, but all three of us voting for Mike Kalinowski as the player of the year is the, can I get a great Scott? Great Scott. That's the, that's the great Scott moment of the night. That is the great Scott moment of the mother flipping night. Also, holy moly. Just another thing towards Mike Kalinowski. Heavy. This was this was the year when everyone's like, "Oh, Mike's the second greatest player of all time." And he might be the greatest. Like this is the year when everyone goes, "Oh, he's definitely the second greatest player of all time." Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's like damn. <laughs> it's and I yeah. I so I oh man, I so would love to get I don't know. Might honestly my vote might change by the time we have to vote between Mike and Marisol. I mean, it might, <sighs> but it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Because you like, said I, it on this show, and this is the only show that matters, Frank Janice. This is true. This is Damn true. you. Oh, man. But I, you know, I, I mean, when you look at these preliminary polls that were in the Facebook group, it looks like Marisol's going to run away with it. So, yeah. And I'm fine with that. I'm fine I'm with, fine with Marisol winning and me voting for yeah. Mike. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. You're like <laughs> Hannah Montana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so, guys, look, you, y'all have said it all. Y'all yeah. really have. Paul, your Windows 95 was able to hold up Whew. the duration of the broadcast. Not sure how. Um, Frank Janish, you're Frank Janish. And that's, that's, mm-hmm. that's all that needs to be said. That's all that needs to be said because it says it all. And we had one more Uh-oh. super chat. If Mike can win the singles title next season, he would be in the head-to-head debate for Dan Merle for the GOAT. I think he's already in no, that conversation. If he wins, singles, if he wins the singles oh, title, he over. is the GOAT. Yeah, he's, he's the GOAT only by player. a mile. Three divisions. That's Not by a mile, but he's the GOAT. I need to stop saying by a mile. Hey, Tay Namaho, love this Home Alone idea. Hit me up on the Twitter, at Brad Gilmore. Frank Janish, at FrankieJ29. At, are you Paul Denuzio? I'm at Paul underscore Denuzio. Paul underscore Denuzio on the Twitter. This is the only show that matters. This is the Schmodown Rundown, abbreviated version. Frank, are we back next week? We're back next week, right? I guess so. Right? We don't. We don't take off. This, this, we don't. We don't we sleep. Used to. 
Yeah, we, we don't to. anymore. We don't. This is the Schmodown Rundown. We'll see y'all next week. Mike for president.